Good evening, and welcome to the St. Petersburg by Night Podcasting Network. Tonight, we present to you our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, Don't Get Caught. Welcome to another St. Pete by Night revamped production. The following is rated for mature audiences and may contain graphic themes that will be distressing to some viewers. As always, we recommend you ensure the safety and well-being of yourself and those around you at all times. Viewer discretion is advised. everyone and welcome to the St. Pete by Night Twitch channel where we play St. Petersburg by Night, a massive multiplayer tabletop role-playing game set in the world of darkness. We play Vampire the Masquerade, we play Hunter the Reckoning, and we also play Werewolf the Apocalypse. My name is Nikki, also known as Crafty Mirage, and you can find me on all social media at Crafty Mirage, and I'm one of the storytellers here on St. Pete by Night. Make sure to check out St. Pete by Night on all of our major social media platforms, we're on Twitter, also known as X, we are on TikTok, we're on Instagram, and we're on YouTube, but you should check us out on our website, stpeatbynight.com, where we have our city map, we have our storyteller profiles, we have our threat meter, and we also have a lot of other stuff in the works because Kyrie is a mad genius who won't, doesn't know when to stop. Um... <laughs> If you aren't already a subscriber here on Twitch, you should go ahead and hit that follow button and catch up on our past episodes. And if you're interested in playing with us, come join our Discord server and be a part of our amazing community. Today, we are playing Don't Get Caught, one of our chronicles here on St. Pete by Night. Finally back after a break with some new faces. Let's introduce those faces, shall we? Hello, I'm Jade. I am playing the character Alex Baker of Clan Toriador. I am Mango, and I will be playing Annalise Fisher, the Tremere hacker. I'm an old face, uh, Krasaz. I'm playing Rex Elias Nasratu. I am Jay, playing Valerie Monet of Clan Ventru. We're back on top. All right. So. The Don't Get Caught Coterie was initially brought together to deal with a problem. With the disappearance of several kind in the Anarch territories that were later discovered to be victims of a rogue white that was prowling through the sewers, killing people indiscriminately, and leaving their bodies to rot down below or up above, depending on expediency of the authorities, I would assume. <laughs> but through trial and error, through 
a mission to get a buttload of cocaine. Uh, Rex and Valerie, along with the Anarch Sweeper Lucian, were able to destroy the white in question and take care of the problem, hopefully for now. Though there was suspicion that there may be more. In the days that followed, Rex found himself alone in the Anarch territories and his own domain. He met with the Baron of Tarpon Springs, Sebastian de Leon, and learned that his coterie mates fell to the wind. Avery the Bruja ran off in per- to keep herself and her touchstone stay- safe. Valerie was given over to the Camarilla in retaliance for some things that should not have been said in the neutral zone in front of Camarilla officials. And Rex was alone, but was given new purpose by Sebastian de Leon. Tonight, Rex, we find ourselves at the Coterie Haven, actually. It's a lot nicer than your place, and Nate can't find you there. So, you're there alone. What has been on your mind the past few weeks since your talk with DeLeon? Well, uh, Rex has mostly been focusing on his efforts on how exactly he would go about planning this thing. Um... At this point, he's kind of gotten over the whole Coterie thing. Uh, Valerie's missing. Uh, Avery's gone. Gwendale. Uh, that that was reasonable, to say the least. Um, he never really learned much about their fates. Uh, haven't seen any of them since. So at this point, he's just kind of expecting De Leon to dump a bunch of newbies onto him. Um, but he's been giving a good look at uh, the other baronies, going out occasionally, just checking out the places, seeing what he can do, seeing what he can find out. So you're looking for information on the other baronies. All right, what information are you trying to gather and from which barony? Um, the southernmost barony, uh, Dunedin, I believe. Um... Well, I guess I'm mostly just trying to figure out. Hmm. I'm, I'm trying to find potentially some new recruits who aren't necessarily part of the cartels, who aren't who aren't associated with anybody organized, and seeing if he can maybe find some some people, some of them who are willing. I. Uh, some of them who are willing to uh, maybe uh, work for him in order to start undercutting uh, the barons there. So you're looking for contacts within... All right. Go ahead and give me a... Wits and Streetwise to see how effective you are in finding... Foot, feet on the ground in Dunedin. You sure you want to go with uh, Spider's Man? Cause uh... <laughs> I mean, it just it just you have a familis right there. I'm sure. <laughs> um, I I doubt it, but can I add my uh, drug specialty? If you're specifically looking for drug dealers, I would say yes. But are you just looking for specifically drug dealers, or...? Yes, I'm looking for newbies interested. Who who might be doing some, you know, meager here or there. Oh, my buddy's got some stuff, and maybe I can get some money by selling it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if you're just looking for drug dealers, then you can go ahead and add your drug specialty. All right. 
would you like me to rouse? Yes, please. It's a new night. And in fact, any of my players who are currently in the chat and unseen on camera can go ahead and do their rouse checks for the day. Successful rouse for me. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll take that. That's going to be a six successes critical. Six successes with a crit. All right. So. Success. What, some information that you are able to gather from your, a lot, like you get, you utilize fudge and cheese a lot in this endeavor. Uh, just because you're, you took De Leon's advice to heart. You don't want to f be seen too much down there just to make sure that they won't be connected with you. But they get the information back to you. There are a few low level street gangs down in the Dune Eden area, mainly a bunch of like college student age people who are get are now just getting into dealing. They're peddling low level stuff, you know, school, like uh, pills for college students, uh, some ecstasy, weed, the part they're they're selling party drugs more than anything or stuff for college students to help them focus during finals especially since that's coming right around the corner uh but they are able to find you some guys and they are able to potentially set up a meeting with you and these guys here in the near future all right yeah that sounds great i'll uh, certainly look into that yeah it's about this time while you are just texting and talking with uh, Fudge and Cheese that you hear a car pull up outside. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, check out the window, see who's pulling up, I'll do the blinds thing. Outside, you see... Valerie, what uh, car would you say that your father drives? This is not a good question to ask me. I don't know anything about cars. <laughs> uh, uh, wait, wait, didn't we decide late, earlier that he had a certain kind of car? It was like a very fancy kind of car. I think it was like a BMW or like a BMW or something. I also don't know anything about cars. If you're an expert into cars, uh, post what car you think my dad drives. Anyway, but no, uh, I thought it was a really fancy one. I thought you said like a, something like that, but uh, I assume I mean something on the fancier end because you know he has a, a sugar mama, if you will. Mm -hmm. I'll say it's just uh, oh, it's a Lincoln. It was a Lincoln. There, there we go. It was it was like yeah, one of those passenger Lincolns. Yeah. So you see a uh, a black Lincoln pulling up into the driveway outside, uh, and you see a man coming out of the vehicle from the driver's of the side of the vehicle it is a man that you recognize and you have seen before uh and you rec the la you remember that the last time you noticed this man was when valerie was making him kneel before her in de Leon's spa the man walks around the car and goes and opens the passenger side door. Valerie, how do you, wh how would you say that you look this evening, having just driven in from Tampa? Considering that there's not really clothing stores open at these hours, uh, I imagine I look quite like shit. I have my typical, like, you know, business attire, business casual, but it's stained with blood. You know, from a, mainly from my up here, from the chest area, and on my the blazer itself. Uh, hair is not in the greatest condition. Looks like I tried to fix it up a little on the ride here, but it still is a, a mess. I look rather hungry as all hell as I'm looking around, kind of you know, kind of a little twitchy as I'm going to kind of just not even regard my father as I just kind of walk past him and just walk up to the door and I'll give a, a knock on it. I'm going to retreat from my window and uh, slowly open the door. 
Uh, hi. I see you're not dead. Surprisingly. Very. Things been kept under control over here. Did Dalyon tell you a story of how I was taken or... Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've gotten the pieces together, both from him and from one of your captors. I'm sure you know the one I'm talking about. Would you like to remind me on that? The one with the ugly face. The one that looks old and... Yeah. They were, uh, skewering their features, but I... Appreciate you letting me know that. I'll have to keep that in mind for later. Didn't seem uh, like it, but okay. But yeah, I'm back. Uh, not without its price. I've been kept in temp. Actually, let's continue the conversation inside, as opposed to just standing out here for anyone to see. Okay, fine. Um... You don't got a, like, wire or a bomb on you, do you? No, I do not have a wire on me. If you want to search, you can, but no, I don't have that. Okay, just don't blow up my goddamn house. What? I Your wire. house. Remember this. Okay. I'll uh, walk in as I'll kind of start fixing myself a little bit more as I really need to get new clothes on they were not kind enough to give me a new outfit I had to make an escape through my father I guess some part of him decided that he actually does care about me on some level uh, Rex you see that the her Valerie's uh, kind father has stepped in to the house to, as well and is pretty much keeping his eyes down averted. He closed the door behind you guys and locked it. Very much... He's acting a lot like River does. Just in terms of mannerisms, posture, how he keeps his eyes down whenever the kindred in the room are speaking. Uh, hands to his side. He's... Atten he's attentive, but making sure that he just keeps to the background and hasn't spoken yet. But he, uh, as you guys are traveling into the room, he is just going, he is basically just standing in like the doorway of the living room and uh, standing at attention, waiting for orders. Is, uh, is that okay? Well, he did help me, so... I some level should not just kick him to the curb if he can at least stay here or at least keep an eye on him so then but it's been if not been a very kind two weeks you know a few weeks it had been Tampa's is uh not a great place to visit. Yeah, I imagine. Well, you best be lucky. I was about a week or two away from throwing out all your shit. So, uh, you're good. Everything's up there. I'm going to switch into a new outfit. So, you just wait here. Uh, and I'll look, I'll look to my dad and say, just sit, make yourself comfortable, I guess. Find somewhere a room or somewhere to put your stuff down if you have any. I'm just going to get changed. He is looking around this home that you have acquired and just looking at the bizarre array of tacky ass statues and decor that are laying about and uh Eventually, he just uh, wanders further into the living room. Doesn't seem to want to actually sit in there on the sit down though. 
So he ends up just going into the kitchen and checking the refrigerator, which is pretty much full of food that was just for River mostly, some bottles of water, stuff like that. Uh, he just takes one of the bottles of water and just starts drinking, leaning on the counter as he waits for Valerie to come back and regarding Rex with a, with a observant eye. Yeah, hey, uh, don't get too comfortable. Uh, keep in mind, uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're still some Camarilla Ventru puppet. I'm not exactly comfortable with you being here. But, uh, if Valerie's gonna let you be here, that's fine. Just, uh, like I said, don't get too comfortable. I, 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 I understand. He, he, uh, you see him, uh, like, push his, uh, like, uh, start fiddling with the cuffs of his shirt a little bit. Uh, yeah, I... It, it took a lot for me to walk her out of there internally, but I, I needed to do something. They were... They were going to... They weren't going to let her. And he just falls silent. Okay, then. still my kid even even if she is uh, and I am I I'm I'm Mar I'm Mar I'm Marquis I'm Monet by the way uh call everyone calls me Mark okay Marquis Mark I'm Rex that's all you'll know of course Mr. Rex Uh, do you do you require anything for in the uh, for the time being? Uh, nope. Just uh, let's just wait for family. Uh, go ahead and give me a wits and insight check on the guy. Sure. Two successes. Two successes. All right. He just, he looks nervous. He looks, he he's about as twitchy as you are whenever your clan compulsion kicks in. And he's kind of just extremely uncomfortable, just tugging and fidgeting. And like, un, like has nothing to do. So like to feel productive, he just keeps taking sips of water. Eventually, Valerie, you do find manage to find a clean, so a clean change of clothes. You, yes. I have, so, last I remember, in my closet, I did have a a weird little setup in there. Is that still in there? A little a little shrine, if you would. Surprisingly, no. Actually, okay. actually. All right. Yeah, I wouldn't even remember it anyway. So it's just, it's just nothing out of the ordinary then. So, uh, actually, um, go ahead and give me a wits and uh, awareness. I assume I'm still at the hunger value that I was last yes, told I was at. Yes, you are. Plus one minute. Yes. What this? You said wits and awareness, right? Wits and awareness. Actually, I'm just not going to roll. 300 dice does not sound like a good time. You can take half. You know what? Actually, I got to do it. Because I'm not a coward. Mm -hmm. Uh, not respond. Hold on. Not oh, uh, so just that. put your pool because it's tracking your hunger. Oh, okay. Nope, still not okay. working. 
Yeah, uh, so Kyrie went ahead and made some changes to the bot where you have to put in your you have to put in your uh, thing. Go ahead and just uh, do you have uh, physical dice? Do you, by uh, by one of our amazing peeps, the uh, Dragon Ink, whatever I forget their name. Sorry, but the dice right here. Yay. Don't worry. I'm terrible with names. All right. Six and higher, there's successes, right? I don't know why I always forget. Six, uh, it's six, six and uh, six and higher is a success, yes. Two successes. Two successes. Your room looks about the same as when you left it. It does look like it's a little bit messier. Like the the clothes aren't as folded as neatly as they had been. It looks like actually you do notice that when you open a drawer to like get some clothes out, looks like some of the clothing had been moved and shifted a little bit, like. So like you do like you can't recall if maybe River w had done anything or but it does look like things are just a little bit messier than the way you left them. But maybe it was just like that when you left. You don't you're not too sure. I'm giving more to paranoia there and assume assume something happened with it, but you know, it's to be expected. Now, uh you get changed. You yep. finish getting changed into a clean, some clean clothes. You run a brush through your hair, uh, clean up your face a little bit more, uh, and head back downstairs where Rex is pretty much. You're like giving his his her father a stare, the stare, like suspicious. You give him some sus some sus side eye. Uh, yeah, I'm not keeping my eyes off of him. Yeah, so you come, you return to find Rex just watching your father suspiciously. I'm just <clears throat> so any updates on the the job currently any new leads I haven't gotten shit from, uh, since we took out the wife so um, basically I've just been hanging out hmm. all right are you going to have a meeting with De Leon or Marco soon? Well, I mean, now that you're here, does does he know you're here? I did not make my presence known yet. I at least um, wanted to change it before I even had got a chance to speak to them. I mean, we can, we can let them know now. We could, or I could, if you have a meeting set up or something you could set up, I imagine considering that he has you working alone on this, that probably going to send you some new assistance. Uh, yeah, I've been expecting a new color anytime, but I've not been working on shit. I've, I've been doing nothing. Like I've just been doing my normal cartel shit. Uh, I haven't been heard enough and haven't seen nothing. You haven't even been working towards what we talked about? Oh, I've been doing that. Um, I guess I will say where plan A is a partial abort. We're still going to do some of it, but that's not where I'm aiming at. Um, basically, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spill the beans a little bit. I did get to meet with De Leon while you were gone. Um, if I'm going to do what I'm going to do, I'm going to take over someone else. But we he, he was still very much interested in what I said about uh, the power plant that I mentioned. And so that's going to probably be our job when we're not investigating any other white shenanigans. Speaking of jobs, I still I'll have to talk to if I can't talk to De Leon, I'll have to talk to Marcos because I deserve a damn cut of what we just did. Six shots with what two shotguns worth of ammo of what we had. That's compared to fifty million we just got. Well, I'm not going to accept that, especially after what just happened. No. But 
it's good that at least something has been done there. It's, it's interesting that you did he find out that you were planning on what you were doing, or did he did you tell him? Oh no, I told him. Um, well, he was definitely curious as to what I was wanted to do with my own life. Uh, but oh, by the way, one year as of a couple days ago. Uh, anyway, um, he asked me what I wanted to do. I have a, I had a sneaking suspicion that he knew what I wanted to do, so I went and just fucking said it. Interesting. Are you sure that he's trying to support you in this regard, or is he? What is what was his stance on it? Oh yeah, he's got his. He, I've got his full support as long as you know. Well, I'll uh, I'll let you know the details later. All right. I just only thing I have to say about that right now is just make sure to not let yourself be in a position of just being a a puppet to him. Oh yeah, no, I said that to his face. I'm not no puppet, uh, and. While I've taken all his advice uh, the, to mind, I do think that he is wrong on several parts. And I know, and hell, he was telling me directly to my face, do not trust me. Don't trust anybody. Fuck over who you can. And I, uh, subtext being, I will fuck you over as soon as possible. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, if you need any example, you have one standing right in front of you. In terms yep. of someone fucked over. Rex, but at this point, your when you get updates for the sewers, the cameras in there, do they come to your phone or do they come to the computer in the kitchen? Um, yeah, the, the, I, I'm not, I'm not tech savvy enough to get it to alert my phone. Uh, so it would probably be showing up on a little laptop I've got set up somewhere. All right. Well, uh, you hear the uh, the alert that from the uh, from the app that you have synced to those cameras. You hear the alert come in on your uh, on the laptop. The fuck. Hold on. Uh, he'll go approach the uh, the laptop. Um, it was it was in his uh, little room that he reserved for himself, uh, so he's gonna go in there and check it out. Yeah, you you like get out of the like the black the black screen of the laptop, and you you know you like touch the mouse pad to like get the screen active again, uh, and you do see that there's a new like uh, a motion detected alert from coming from the app. Yeah, I'm gonna open it up and see if I can see anything happening. So you uh, look back on some of the footage, uh, like you go back a like a couple minutes to where uh, the uh, the motion was detected, um, and one of the cameras in the sewers, you catch two shapes walking past it. Okay. Um. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and alert Val. Val, somebody's fucking around in the sewers. Of course. Is it what more of your types or what is it? I see at least. Can't, can't see. It's the back's facing the camera. Well, but they definitely aren't walking around on four legs or anything. Uh, definitely. He there for a purpose. Yep, we need to investigate that later. This is still our territory. Can't let anyone else just walk in, waltz on in here. Yeah. Uh, you want to head down? Or you want to take a minute and maybe we could just sit back and watch the cameras? Do we know their approximate location or where we might find them? Uh, let's see. I think that's camera three should be around the northern side, I think. You see that the pathway uh, of the cameras that you got set up are heading in the direction of that cistern with the piles of bodies that are still down there. Yeah, it looks like they're heading towards where the bodies were. 
shit. If I just uh, I'll I just pull out my my pistol and make sure it's loaded. As I just seems like we're gonna have to make sure they don't get there if, if it's any sort of kind. All right, I guess we can take a walk. Is Mark coming with you? Put him to work. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, uh, Mark uh, nods uh, as you order him to follow. Uh, and you guys head over to the sewer grate that you know is closest to the cistern where the bodies are located. Uh, you head on down. You navigate through the dank, disgusting smelling tunnels. Rex, there are plenty of rats at your feet as you're walking around. They're just scurrying about back and forth. There's a there's a general food source available to them at any point. So they're they like this area a lot, and they have just been gnawing on those decaying bodies at their pleasure. Uh you travel through and eventually you do uh are you are beginning to near the cistern. Uh Valerie and Rex, go ahead and give me a wits and awareness. My favorite. Okay. okay. All right. So, what were your results? I have two six. So uh, I'll, I have three. Okay. All right. So, uh, with both of you are able to, as you're walking through, you're able to hear with uh chatter coming in the direction of the cistern. Sounds like two individuals speaking. So we're at the cistern right now, right? No, you're not there yet, but you are nearing it. And because it is a it sewer like with pipes. Yeah, it sounds like it's coming from the direction of the cistern, the voices. I'll, I'll pull out my gun and kind of have it behind me as I as I walk forward. Just in case something happens. Rex, what are you doing? Um, I guess I'll... Um... I'll just wait a little bit, see what's happening. So you're not moving forward just yet? Not quite. Okay. I'll so try and stealthily move forward. You're going to stealthily move forward. All right. So Valerie, go ahead and give me a dex and stealth. I'll leave this with a stake out. Can I help? Uh, you, are you going to go with her? I just figured the dice roll, I have the bonus, but um, can I just get close enough to not like actually like pop out into the cistern? Yeah, you can. That would still be a dex and stealth check, though. Okay, that's fine. Like, I don't want to like Observe. completely step yeah. back. So. Oh, okay, that could be worse. Two successes once again. Can I add my ambush specialty? Yes, you can. Sweet. Um. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and reroll this. It would have been a messy critical for successes otherwise. So let's go ahead uh -huh. and try to do. That would have been a great. That would have been amazing. Can I only reroll three dice, or I don't do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can reroll three dice. You, okay, you're not able to reroll the hunger dice, right? No, you can't reroll hunger. Oh, buddy, still got one. All right, let's go. All right, so, uh, Valerie. Um, all right, okay. So, uh, Rex, we'll start with you. Uh, you are able to, you, you're used to sneaking. It's no issue for you. You're, you're comfortable s skulking around, making sure that you're on, you're unnoticed. But what you're not used to is, uh, people you don't know hanging around in the sewers you've claimed for your own. And, uh, that little itch, that little internal itch, that beast is, uh, really starting to wonder like hey man 
Who the fuck's in the sewers? Who are these people? They ain't whites because they chatting. Who are these guys at? Let's, you gotta find out. You gotta find out as your, uh... Is the secret that your comp clan compulsion to no secrets comes in. Valerie, um... Your heels are clicking on the... In the sewers too much, and you are making some noise as you come in. And actually, we're going to switch scenes. Uh, you guys do uh, get to see the cistern, and uh, let's go ahead and describe what our new characters look like. Starting with Alex, what do what would they see as they approached? Normally, Alex is wearing a, either a chef's uniform or professional black clothing. And heavy boots, uh, usually either a leather or kind of a punk denim jacket. It, they have piercing blue eyes and short, spiky, kind of punk hair with a lot of piercings in their ears and face. Okay. And Annalise, what do they see when they see you? Annalise is in a black hoodie with uh, cold lace-up shoulders and cat ears on the hood. She has dark green hair and uh, gray green eyes. She is wearing black cargo pants along with that hoodie and uh, some pink platform uh, Doc Martin type boots that are like a pastel pink uh, that give her another about three inches of height. So she's normally 5'10". Right now she's standing at about 6'1". Uh, and she is every so often doing a little bit of caramel dancing just to fuck with Alex because it's bothering her. So what conversation would they be hearing as you guys approach? Additionally, yes. Alex is wearing heavy leather gloves, big boots, and a face mask. Okay. So uh as so um there so the Rex and Valerie are approaching, what would they be hearing from Annalise and Alex as they approach? Oh, by the way, to describe what you guys are looking at, you are in a cistern right now, Annalise and Alex. You are in a cistern underground in the disgusting sewers. There are rats everywhere. And a pile of bodies that are in various forms, uh, various stages of decomposition, rotten, bloated, and just putrid in the middle of this cistern piled on top of each other. The rats have been actively gnawing on it. None of these bodies even have like, you can't, you wouldn't be able to tell facial features from these bodies anymore because the rats have effectively eaten all of the flesh off the surface <laughs> of their faces. Even the rats in Florida are on bath salts. Interesting. Oh. This must be the place. Let's get this over with. The faster you get them chopped up, the faster I can get your Toriador ass out of the sewer. Let's go. I draw two large chef's knives and start cutting up the bodies. Okay. Go ahead mm. and give me a dexterity and melee. All right. And as she is doing that, as she gets like limbs and stuff free, I'm going to bite my wrist and start to corrosive vitae body parts. So Rex and Valerie, you are noticing. Oh wait. Oops. So it's slash roll. Yeah, it's slash V five roll. V five roll, yes. That is three successes. Don't forget to yeah. hit accept. Yeah, there we go. All right, so. Uh, three successes, you are a pro at this, and the bodies are pretty soft at this point. The flesh is pretty much, like, almost falling off. Uh, but you're able to, like, debone, cut limbs off easily. You know where the joints are, being as classically trained as you are. You know how to get the knife through there to do it as quickly as possible with minimal mess. Uh, and you are getting them, like, you're getting these bodies chopped up uh, at a decent speed. Uh... And Annalise is corrosive vitaying them. Uh, go ahead and give me that rouse check, by the way, Annalise, for the corrosive vitae. Gotcha, gotcha. And Rex and Valerie, uh, as you're approaching, you do see that there are two women who are in the process of disposing of these bodies. Okay. 
And we overheard the conversation earlier, right? Yes, you have. You are able to hear it because it's pretty much like echoing around. Uh, Rex, uh, you are effectively very stealthed, but um, Alex and Annalise, as um, you are in the midst of your work, you do hear the sounds of footsteps coming from behind you, from one of the pi one of the sewer tunnels. Yeah, shit. I'll guard the. I'll guard that way. You keep working. Ten four. All right, uh, Alex, go ahead and give me a wits and awareness. All right. To try to see in the dark at what is going on. Shit, maybe I should be looking. I got one success. All right. So with one success, you didn't grab the flashlight before turning to look at the sewer tunnel. So you don't, you know that there's so, you heard footsteps coming from that direction. This, it sounded like heels actually, but you don't, you, because of how dark it is down here, you don't actively see what it is that's in the tunnel. And Valerie- Can I try Rex like looking over my shoulder? Um, oh, in that case, can I use, uh, Use heightened senses to see better. Yeah, All right, you can go ahead and activate heightened senses, uh, and it's going to be a, you can go ahead and roll an additional. Your auspex is at two, correct? Uh, let's see. Auspex is at two. So you go ahead and just roll two more dice. So just add two to the roll. Yes, just so just roll two dice, mm -hmm. and we'll add it to whatever your pool is there. Two successes, ignore the hunger. So three so three successes fully. Um, you start, so initially you start looking in and you're realizing it's dark. So you go ahead and activate your heightened senses uh, and you blink and you start seeing almost like in grayscale, like in the within the pitch black. And you see a shape of a woman with curly hair standing further inside the, inside the tunnel. And Valerie, you? yeah, Valerie, you do see a woman staring at you. That the one of the women staring at you now, and the scene is yours. I imagine uh, after that, I'll uh, <clears throat> I'll walk out of the darkness. Then uh, one arm still kind of behind me, at, with holding the gun. I thought I'll just say, uh, "What? Where do you? Where are you two coming from? What barony are you, are you both of you from? I know you're kindred." What business is it of yours? What's it to you? This is our domain, actually. Oh, then you should have cleaned up your own fucking mess. You're welcome. Yeah, Sebastian sent us to get this fucking job done. Sebastian, uh, of course he would. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll I'll call out to my to my father. I'll say, "Come on, come, help them out." Uh, Annalise and Alex, you see a man uh, in his late 40s, early 50s, is stepping out from behind uh, Valerie. Uh, Valerie, go ahead and describe what uh, you look like to Annalise and Alex. Can do. Well, my, do, do, do. So Valerie at the, you know, standing at a, oh gosh, my, I like a 5'10", though she's wearing like two inch heels right now. So it brings her up to that nice six foot uh, she pretty frail, pretty small, like, you know, doesn't really have it much muscle as she stands there with um, curly uh, black hair, uh, amber eyes. You see her like facial features are a lot more sharp as she stands there, kind of not a little bit looking down at the both of you, just, you know, looking just kind of cranky right now and just waiting for her father to come up and start working you're looking up at me sugar and um the 
man, the man in his uh, late 40s, early 50s that you see behind her um, is a man uh, with, he also has curly wavy hair, uh, but it's like a dark, it's more of a dark brown, uh, stubbly beard around his uh, jaw. And uh, the same simil uh, similarly colored eye, similar colored eyes to Valerie. Uh, go ahead and make me a wits and insight, Alex and Annalise. Or wits and awareness, whichever one. Alrighty, one moment. Crafty, do I have any active observers on me? Nope. None of them. I would like high. to update. I would like to obfuscate. Two successes. Two successes. All right. Let's see the passage, I believe. What did you get? Uh... Two successes. I'm going to re-roll just real quick. Okay. There we go. So two and three. All right. Okay. Um, what did you guys use for your roll? Did you use awareness or insight? Let me know. Alex, did you use awareness? Awareness. Or awareness and Annalise. Uh, I used insight. Um, question for you, though. Yes. Would it have been a reasonable thing for me to have had since the unseen up since we were in the sewer? Sure. You can. I will say that. Yeah. I will say yes. Uh, go ahead. Uh, mm -hmm. I will say that you can activate that. Let me get to the uh, the uh, wits and uh, awareness slash insight rolls. All right, uh, Alex, you used awareness. Um, with two successes, you notice that there is a lot of similarities between uh, Valerie and this this middle aged man behind her. You're not, like you're not able to pick up how how they're similar just yet. Maybe in some brighter light, you might be able to pick it out. But they do look similar to each other. And uh, Annalise. You are able to determine with your three successes that both of these individuals are standing a very tall and proud. They have uh, an air of superiority and arrogance to them. Yes. Uh, can I tell that one of them is a kindred? With your heightened senses, you can hear, actually, yes, you can hear that the individual behind her has a heartbeat. Is that a ghoul? I just why would I bring a normal kind down into the sewers? Yes, of course it's a ghoul. The feed. I failed my rouse check for my uh, unseen passage. Okay. If you have any any more uh, pointless questions, if you don't have any more pointless questions, we can start putting up these bodies before anyone else comes down here. Oh, we're not putting them fucking anywhere, buddy. And I am still actively saucing body parts with corrosive vitae and dissolving shit. Yeah, so actually, Valerie, you do see that uh, as the body parts are being, like, are being stacked, o like, are being, like, uh, tossed over to Annalise, uh, you do see that she is actively dripping blood from her wrist onto them, and the blood uh, almost sizzles and hisses as it makes contact with the flesh and bone. And you do see that it is actively starting to dissolve and turn into like this brackish sludge that's go that's beginning to cover the ground. It's, it's slow going, but it is happening. Finally, uh, uh, daily on side to send someone who actually has teeth and skills for this regard instead of sending me two meatheads. Annalise, uh, go ahead and roll me a wits and awareness with your aspects. For your for gotcha, uh, gotcha. for sense the unseen, you can you roll me a uh, dex? I believe it's dexterity and obfuscate. Sure. Let me just double check. Would would there be in any way that I can help Rex? Because I know I know Rex is around, 
And I know that Rex probably hiding for a reason. You can't help for it with an obfuscate. Uh, Rat. Because he's literally, it's a discipline thing. So he's doing unseen passage. It is. Okay. It is. Three successes. Okay, so it's dex and stealth and you can add your obfuscate rating to it. Okay. Can I add my obfuscate? So I, would, I mean, my uh, ambush specialty again. Are you actively potentially trying to ambush these people? Now that you know that they're not a. Uh... Um. Yeah, you know what? Now you're right. I had to consider it for a moment. You're like, uh... it's gonna be six successes. Six successes. Yeah, Annalise, you are not crazy. able to see anything else other than Valerie. failure, right? I'm focused on this uptight bitch in front of me. It's all good. Yes. Uh, I will say, how, uh, with the bestial failure, I'll say that just be, be, since she is actively corroding these th these uh, bodies, that she just get you gain a point of hunger, because you're pouring a lot of blood into this. So, for the best Yeah. For the bestial failure, you have a point of hunger. Where did I... Hang on. You had a one in there, and you lost the. Oh, that's right. That's fair. Okay. All right. Point of hunger. Eh, it's not so bad. It's just a two. Yeah. I'm gonna start circling around to the other side to where they are, so and try not to go past Valerie or anybody to bump into me. Just kind of circle around. Okay. The scene is still yours. Yeah, I don't care. I'm still waiting for my my father to to come assist them. I just say, help with the bodies or however you can. He Wait, did you say that. Hmm. What'd you say? Did you say that. Your father. Yeah, I said that. I said uh, just help with the bodies however you can. That's what I told. Oh. All right. Yeah. My he uh, looks disgusted seeing the mess in the sewers and the bodies. Like and like, you can tell he actively is paler just from the scent alone, struggling to... Actually, I'm going to make him... I'm going to make him roll a uh, composure and resolve to see if he's able to not puke. <laughs> I love... How about you, hoity-toity? Why don't you come fucking help? I'm just going to look down at my tiny, frail arms. I thought I'll just... I don't have much to help with. I would rather just keep an eye out, make sure no one creeps up on us, because there could be more of what causes this out here. I mean, so far, the only creep in the area is you. So, uh, as uh, Alex, this uh, middle-aged uh, ghoul is approaching, he starts to reach down to, like, uh, pull one of the bodies out so you can do your chopping. Uh, and you see him, like, you see him, like, like the smell, the scent, like the smell just hits him, and you just see him, and like he quickly lets the lets releases the body and runs off to one end, like one uh one of the walls of the cistern, and you all can hear and visibly hear and see him ejecting the contents of his stomach. No, I don't blame him. It's all right, buddy. Happens to the best of us. You'll get there. <laughs> Uh, he's he he can't keep it he yeah he's just at, he's just gonna be dry heaving in the corner for a few moments i continue slicing and dicing the bodies i'm gonna make my way towards the body pile okay one thing i would like to say by the way just i went in response to the things of you're only creep one here at valley said no don't worry there are much creepier things down here than just me eh, i don't know about that <laughs> Oh, how'd these guys get here? I assume you two know. I'm sorry, repeat that one more time. They're a little quiet for me. Can you say that one more time? How did the buys get here? 
I assume you two know. This isn't the place to talk of that. Well, we can talk about it in a little more. Uh, Anything to get area. my mind off this disgusting job. Or you could have not fucking spent 20 minutes bitching at the entrance to the sewer and we could have been done by now, you know. It, I get that, like, that Toreador's a fancy fuckers, but, like, get a move does, on, bitch. That doesn't change how long we're in these fucking sewers. Can I, uh, It really does, though. Can I take that Toreador information as my, um... Not to rob you guys of creepy wrecks, but can I take that as yes, my, Yes, uh, that is a secret. You learned something about them. Secret found. Got it. We do love creepy wrecks. Creepy Rex is great. Uh, creepy Rex, is, uh, we, we stand a creepy Rex. Maybe later. <laughs> um, so Rex, so what Rex is going to do is he is going to uh, grab a skull. Okay. And then he's going to go, and then he's going to bring it up to uh, Alex's face. And he's going to unobfuscate and go, so Alex, oh. <laughs> Alex, uh, you are cutting, slicing, and dicing. Focus, very focused because you are a you are a focused individual. You want to get your job done and get the fuck out of here. But all of a sudden, uh, this skull, like one of the heads that that's been that you already cut, you managed to cut sever off, uh, gets brought up. It's got flesh kind of coming off of it, and it's being raised to your face. And all of a sudden, you just see a Nosferatu. I instinctively swing my blade. Rex, go ahead and give, the skull. Rex, go ahead and give me a dexterity and athletics. And Alex, go ahead and give me a uh, dex and melee. Okay. Would rapid reflexes help with this at all, or? Rapid reflexes just allows you to, um, t uh, like it li allows you to avoid. Uh, uh, to ignore the uh, penalty for no cover and allows you to do to do a I believe it's a minor action two minor actions instead of one okay three successes three successes so um, Rex you're holding the skull off and quick as extremely quick like this like extremely quick reflexes this Toreador's knife just suddenly slices up and goes across your wrist. You take one superficial damage. Okay. So your hoodie gets all sliced up. It cut into your your undead your undead flesh. Hey, Alex, chill the fuck out. What's up? Maybe this asshole wouldn't fuck with me. Maybe he wouldn't fuck with you if you weren't so fuckable with. <sighs> fuck you. You fucking wish. Keep moving. You're not my type. You should be so lucky. Does Alex get back to chopping? I've been chopping this whole time. <laughs> it was a quick right. cut and then back to chopping. All right. Yeah. So uh, you guys are progressively getting through them very quickly. Rex, the so and now there is a Nosferatu in a hoodie. Just uh, Rex, why don't you go on ahead and describe for uh, Annalise and Alex what Rex looks like? All right. Uh, so um, Rex is a very short man. He is 5'4". Uh, he is currently wearing his pizza hoodie. Um, so it's, it's a very obnoxious looking hoodie. Uh, and it, it, he, he, he's just wearing some jeans. Um, he, his face, uh, is mostly human on his right. Um, but then it slowly turns Nosferatu around the middle. And then the left side is just full scavenge. Uh, ab absolutely dirty, disgusting looking scabs. Uh, not, not, not like really gross but just like ugh. um so uh that's about it um just being annoying do you have any skill with blade asshole uh more for stabbing than uh cutting ah useless yeah well alex chill the fuck out that was a good one shorty yeah, don't call me that. Okay, Shorty. 
Yeah, I don't have a name, so that's what that's what I'm going with. My name's Rex. All right, good one, Rex. Now you want to help move shit, or do you want to sit there and look cute? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Look, ah. Uh... So, are you guys actually like? I know that you were given this job. Is there more to that, or are you just here to be cleanup crew? Storyteller, would we have been told go help this coterie, or would we have been told go clean up this coterie's fucking mess? Marco said go down to the sewers and get ri- and get and dispose of the ten bodies that were found down there by some coterie. And then to report back Marco. when you were done. Hey, Marco said to go be merry maids and then come back and check in. Okay. Uh, real quick, Crafty, you said that was superficial or aggravated? Superficial. Okay. I just now got my health tracker set up, so I'm going to do that. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, welcome to the area. This is me in Val's domain. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get this cleaned up. You know... I'm pretty sure this is a punishment from Sebastian for at least one of us here. Yeah, probably because you can't stop running your fucking mouth. Um, I'm, I'm, I think it's past the point of you getting it cleaned up. I think the whole point that we're here is that you didn't fucking get it cleaned up. So now that's my fucking problem. So and just continuing to. Hey, we did most of it earlier, uh, but and we also threw a big tarp on it, but. I guess things change. And I was hoping that a, a cleanup crew like you guys would have been down here weeks ago. So That's not a me problem. They, you didn't take that shit up with De Leon. Fair enough. At least you did the basics. That's commendable. We were going to do the job itself if it wasn't for an uh, outside influence. Which would be the cause of oh, this. Oh my god. Alex, your Toreador not a venture. Remove the stick from your anus. You see what I'm dealing with? Yeah, I see. It's fucking hilarious. Sucks to suck. We all suck. Uh <laughs> All right, let's get this shit over with. You guys collectively uh, get to work on moving the bodies, chopping them up. Valerie, you help too. You toss it. You consider you grabbing an arm and then just like moving it like two feet to the right as help. Uh, but you collect. Valerie? But you collect- I don't know their name, do I? Yeah, no, you don't know their names yet. But you collectively, the four of you, along with Mark, so the five of you, work to. Get the bodies shifted and dissolved, and it takes about an hour for it to get fully done before uh, it's all slowly but surely. You like Annalise, you know how your your blood your vitae works. It will eventually dissolve into a sludge that you don't even need to worry about. Bones, teeth, all of it will be gone by the time like by the time you get up through the sewer grate. Presto change, no fucking evidence. Let's go. You, Fancy, hey, you can at least help a little. I did. I moved some parts around. I'm Like I said, I'm not one for... I don't have a lot to help with. That's why we I all, have him. We all have to do shitty jobs sometimes. I suggest you pull your weight. Oh, you're one to fucking talk. Let's go. Have you seen how good I am at dicing these bodies? Uh, you you want a good job? A little pat on the back? Look, leave Miss Press alone. She's all kinds of things, but one of them isn't d- dirty work. We, she's much better when it comes to mind fucking. So, and also the name is Valerie. Valerie. Hi, Valerie. I don't think, did you introduce yourself yet? No, because nobody else had done any uh, questioning about that. My name is Annalise. And uh, this asshole over here that can't fucking calm down because she's in a stinky place is Alex. 
You can call me Chef Baker, thank you very much. Or boss. Chef Boyardee, let's fucking move. <sighs> that canned crap? Never associate with me with that. Well, let's get on out of here so we may talk more in private, at least go more detailed what happened. You're going back to... Are you going to report to Marco about this? Do you have a, are you going to call him or meet up with him? Do you have a place around here? Uh, storyteller, would I be able to get signal while we're in the sewer? Not well, not well at all. Okay. It's like a week. It's a so, weak signal at best. Okay. So once we hit surface side, wherever we surface, I'm going to pull out my phone and call up Marcos. Uh, Valerie, Rex, do you have a place around here? Not for you. Is there a public shower around here? Probably not. But you could try might, the lake. You might find, yeah, you might find this by the beach. Annalise, the phone rings a couple of times, and uh, you, uh, and after a couple, after a few seconds, uh, Marcos picks up. Anna, baby, you finished that job for me, hey, yet? Marcos. Hey, sweetie, of how you Of course doing? we did. It's spotless. You know me. Efficient, as always. I'm so glad you came you, you came, to, into, came into the state and you came into town. Uh, all right. Um, you want to report back uh, to the spa and we can talk? I got to call up sure, a couple. Uh, of, I got to call up. Uh, I got to call up uh, another uh, one of the ugly ones to meet, meet up there. Oh, come on now. You know their personalities usually aren't half as bad as some of the other fucking plans. Yeah, well, um, when you're not blessed yeah. with looks, I guess they give you a good personality. Give me the fucking you know phone. What? Uh, no, I'm not giving you the fucking phone. Um, no, I need to uh, talk to this motherfucker right now. Shut the fuck up, Rex. Um, hey, wait, 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 Anna, did you say Rex is there? Yeah, some... These two fuckers showed up while we were at the cistern cleaning up with an attitude... Um, two, two, I'm wait, sure wait, that wait, Alex wait, wait. would like to take a shower at the spa. Yeah? Two, two. Uh, yeah, some, some Rex guy and this hoity-toity bitch that had an attitude and wouldn't help move anything. He, you hear, a, there's a pause on the line. Her name Valerie by chance. It is. Are you psychic, Marcos? You didn't tell me you were psychic. Huh. Put me on speaker. Okay. Beep. Rex, buddy. Mar Marcos. How you doing, you bud? Could, not to be disrespectful, but I would have preferred a alert to let me know that some kindred were fucking around in my sewers. Yeah, we were we were gonna. I was actually going to, about to call you to let you know to come to the spa because uh, uh I, I was. I, w I was gonna surprise you with a job done, but uh, I hear I hear that uh, Miss Monet is that you? Are you there, Miss Ma'am? I will stare back. daggers at Valerie. Like, are you sure? Yeah, I'll, I'll say yes. I have returned. Wow! Not without any easy feet, but. Look at you breaking out of Tampa. That's amazing. That is a feat in itself, young lady. Um, you know what? Hey guys, Anna, Alex. Yes, why, sir. Why don't you come on back down to the spa? You can bring uh your your two new friends with you. Uh Alex, I will have the shower I will have the staff prepare one of the mineral baths for you. Thank you. And I'll have a change of clothes. I know you don't like any of- I, I, I know you're, uh, pro, uh, pro uh, I can't say the word. Prolectivity. Predilection? Predilection, thank you. I know how you, I know you're I sensitive to predilection. Alright. No problem, Chef Baker. Uh, but yeah, uh, I look forward oh, to seeing Marcus, you guys. Marcus, yeah. for, uh, in the call, make sure to have River ready. Oh, River and I have been getting along so well. So well, Valerie. You know he's getting a little. He he's been getting a little itchy lately. You probably should come and fix that. Yes, I shall. 
All right, Marcos, honey. We'll see you in 15 to 20, okay? See you soon, baby. Bye. You guys want to ride with me? If you're willing to wait for a moment, I do need to grab me something to eat before we go. But I have been left starving for quite some time. Oh, that's rough. You don't want to pick something up on the way? That is the goal. I'm going to be a little out of my element, to be honest. So it might be a little difficult. But I have someone else to help me. And I'll just look to my to my new ghoul. <laughs> and uh, he'll can I, Now that we're in the light, can I see what's going on between Valerie and the ghoul? Go ahead and give me another uh, wits and awareness. All right. I'll mm. do respect. I'll you can add your Valerie. aspects. I thought Valerie just said she was going to ride with me as long as I would wait. I mean, I should I imagine me and Rex, we came in, I assume, in uh, my father's car. Because, yeah. you know, Three unless we want, wanted to walk. I assume we walked. Yeah. Oh, I, we walked and yeah, sure, we could just walk. Yeah, well, I'll ride with, I probably would be willing to ride with you if you just wait. How many successes? That's fine, successes. I can wait. So three successes. All right, so with three successes, uh, you added your heightened senses, correct? Like your aspects, correct? Mm hmm Okay. So uh, with three successes, you spot little intricacies. They have the same textured hair, same thickness, the eye color, almost identical, and uh, they have a similar nose. Is the school related to you? Does it matter to you? Consider it professional curiosity. Alex, you can't just fucking ask people if they're related to the... Mm. Perhaps if Marco seems that you're good enough to keep around, then maybe you might come to find out. But for now, keep it to yourself. Okay, then. I'm looking to get Marcos a few ghouls. Marcos fucking loves me. I get shit done. I'm looking to get some ghouls of my own and may want to pick your brain if you're so inclined. If you stay around, you might be able to talk a little on that, but... Very well. I guess we'll have to see. All right. You guys uh, all get into the same car, I assume? Yes, I have my very nice 2023 Volvo uh, station wagon hybrid that seats up to seven people and is super fucking luxurious. All right. You, so you go ahead and climb into the uh, the hybrid and, uh, and and Annalise starts driving the car on to La, Sal La Selva Spa. And we're going to go ahead and take our break right here. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in so far. Go ahead and take a, take a little bit of a stretch, get some water, hydrate, use the bathroom, all that good stuff. And we will be back in about five minutes after our theme song, Vampire by Faith and Failure, is finished playing. Until then, see you soon. St. Petersburg by Night is brought to you through collaborations with our partnered vendors. Wolfpack Dice, Ember Fox Dice, Dragon Ink Dice, Bear of the Bard, Champs Tramps, Panchi Artista, and Chromatic Creations US. Links to our partnered vendors, as well as our Twitch and YouTube channels, can be found on our website, stpetebynight.com. The official theme song for St. Petersburg by Night is Vampire by Faith and Failure. You can find them at faithandfailure.com. You can follow SPBN on all socials with the hashtag St. Pete by Night. If you wish to support our program, you can do so at ko-fi.com slash St. Pete by Night to help keep the stories rolling. And welcome back. Last we left off, uh, Rex and Valerie were reunited in the clan Coterie Haven. In the, co in the Coterie's ha Haven. I don't... Words. The, in the Coterie's Haven. And uh, 
Then we're, we're alerted to motion down in the sewers where Rex had uh, some cameras set up and encountered Alex and Annalise, two kindred who were cleaning up the mess left behind by the white. You are now in Annalise's very nice car uh, on the way to La Selva Spa. Is there any conversation that takes place in the car as you are driving? I'd like to use a special little ability of Clan Ventures uh, Kindred Legacies. On is everyone's okay with it on uh, on Annalise? Fucking go for it. Okay. Um let's see. Annalise. Hmm. Based on, you haven't met this person before, so I would say that's something you can perceive off of this individual using your that sharp venture brain of yours. Um, you notice that the SUV itself, itself is very high tech. Uh, like, uh, she's got those LED strips set up in the vehicle too, so it's all... It's got very uh, cyberpunk vibes. Um, you can perceive that there is a laptop bag in uh, like in the like on the like ne near her, uh, and there's monster energy like there like uh, not monster energy drinks because she's human not human. Uh, if she was human, there'd be monster energy drinks like fucking crazy. But um. There are a couple empty Monster Energy cans around just for the appearance, because if okay. I get stopped by a cop or something. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you, and based on how she's dressed, too, you, she comes off to you like those individuals that you actually have seen on Twitch in an effort to help your friend, your friend David, uh, grow his platform. So... I took part of some raids. Yeah, so, um... You're gathering that this person is a younger kindred who seems to be more into the tech, like techie stuff. I shall. I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll get that. See that and I'll kind of look to, or I imagine Annalise is driving. So I'm just, uh, I'll say I didn't. Most of the time, it's Nosferatu. They're usually into tech and technology. What clan Sorry, are you? We didn't go over that. First of all, stereotyping seems a little racist. Um, clanist. All right, clanist. Same difference at, a, at our point in the world. Um, secondly, um, I don't know that you need to know that right this second. And How about a more polite question? How long have y'all been in the city? I haven't seen y'all before. For me, I think maybe like a week, week and a half, something like that. Not long. I got here at the start of the year. Sebastian's been keeping me under wraps for my safety while getting established. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe that. Can you move your mic a little bit closer to... Yeah, there you go. Unnaturally kind of them. Well, hopefully you didn't hear too much of the uh, screams of a certain member we used to have. Um, not a kindred. Hmm. If you were under his protection at his compound that is i don't know anything. no not his compound per se but he's been helping me get my own place yeah he tends to do that hmm. well not for some people though he's seen no like... such thing as a free lunch yeah i'm pretty sure this sewer job was the only the beginning of my payback to him I'm already guessing the situation. We'll see. What do you think? 
Well, I think that you're the newbies that I've been promised to have dumped on me. That would check out, though I am certainly no newbie. You should be so lucky. Indeed. Got anything else to ask, Valerie? I think I am quite content for now. We'll have more, see how things develop. And from there, we'll be able to talk a bit more if you all be staying around. Fair enough. Annalise, you drive the 15 minutes it takes to get to La Salva Spa. It is a beautiful resort within Tarpon Springs with golf courses, uh, cabanas, private pools, all that sort of stuff. There's even a lazy, like there's even like just some places where people could just float on a, like a very small lazy river in the hotel area part of it. Um, but uh, you pull up to the main, uh, and like the main part of the resort. It's this beautiful uh, gray, like gray blue exterior uh, brick house, stone house with a gr dark slate gable roof uh, and white trim on all the windows. Nice, soft, natural lighting coming from inside. It's giving comfortable vibes. It, the lawn is perfectly manicured. There's uh, flora abound, in, per, like that's just like been perfectly set up. Like they hired someone, they hired like a really good landscaper for this place. But the most uh, noticeable aspect of this uh, entrance as you're driving up, uh, there is a big marble statue of the big boss himself uh, set up up front with a golden salamander. Uh, wrapping around the pillar he stands on. And after my own heart. Uh, you pull up to the front. There is a val there is valet service. Do you hand the key? Do you offer the keys to the valet? Yes. Okay. I don't have a ghoul, so. Yeah. So uh, the valet dressed all nice and proper, very attractive valet, uh, takes the, uh, the, takes your car keys, uh, helps people, uh, like other valets open the doors for you all to let you out and, uh, take the car away to park it for you. You guys enter the, uh, lobby of the resort and it is very nice inside, polished floors, uh, reception desk with a pretty young woman, uh, standing behind it um, and something and the thing that you will have noticed that you're all kind of used to even you Annalise by this point there is security here and all of the security kind of share the same look they're all men uh, they're all very large muscular men of Latino descent dressed in like just black button downs and black slacks uh, with earpieces in uh, they don't seem to have weapons but you know better than that all of you are Pretty confident that all of these men are armed inside and just appear not to be to not alarm the guests. Uh, but one of the things that you do see is the familiar face of Marcos uh, approaching from uh, the hall, one of the halls. Uh, Marcos is a Cuban man in his uh, late 20s. Uh, very handsome, impeccable jawline with just the right amount of stubble. Unlike the rest of the staff here, he is just dressed in a nice white uh, V-neck t-shirt with uh, some distressed je acid wash jeans. They're all, they all look designer and he's got an, a simple gold chain around his uh, neck. Uh, and you do see that uh, Mar there's a new addition to Marcos at this point, uh, Rex and Valerie. He has a new sleeve around his arm, a new tattoo sleeve that looks uh, very floral in nature. It looks to be a couple of roses with uh, some thorn, some thorn vines wrapping around it. Almost like he's been marked. And he, he notices you all coming in. Anna, baby, there you are. Hi, Marcos. Rex, buddy, nice to see you again. Chef Baker, yeah. 
Uh, he gestures to the receptionist. If you would like to follow this young lady here, she is going to lead you to one of our private spa rooms where you can cleanse yourself of Thank you so doors. very much. And then he looks at Valerie. Miss Monet, how the hell did you get here? With the help of someone I never expected, to be honest. And I kind of look over to my father. But I'll just say uh, someone had a change of heart, I suppose. After two weeks of what I went through. He looks at your father. Ain't you a member here? And uh, your father kind of flinches a little bit. Uh, yes, yes, I play golf here occasionally. He's just like, yeah, I thought I recognized you. Uh, so do you not want River back? I want River back. This is not a trade. I can only have one. No. Where is River? I can go get River. Uh, do you guys want to follow me? I can get you guys to a private room while I go get him. It's not in the best shape right now. And I thought Baron de Leon respected me and property. Oh, no, no, no. We haven't touched him. He's had his own room. He's just been chilling in there. He hasn't made any escape attempts, so we haven't had the need to knock his, at knock his lights out. But uh, he's been away from you for a little bit. And I don't know what you do to him, but he's got an itch that certain people crave. Fair Starting enough. to get really antsy. I'll, I'll give an answer. Well, I'll be wherever you decide this room to be. I'm ready to follow. All right. Uh, Marcos leads the three of you to a private, uh, like a, it's almost like a, like a little lounge area, but it's got, it's, it's a private lounge area. It's got nice couches, a fireplace, but it's an LED fireplace. Uh, Rex and Valerie, you recognize this as the room where De Leon generally takes his meetings, but he's nowhere to be seen. Uh, nice tattoos, Marcos. They mean anything to you? Were they a gift? Yeah, the boss got them for me. Mm -hmm. He likes giving gifts, doesn't he? Been getting gifts from him for a long time. Keep him happy. It seems yep. for those who, uh, at least for the two new ones here, if you hadn't interacted with them, or one of the new ones here, and interacted with them much, uh, you at least reward those who had the interest in mind. Oh, Anna knows. Mm -hmm. Anna works for Anna worked for our boys up north. Yeah, I uh, I facilitate online communications that otherwise go undetected. We love that about her. Keeps things nice and quiet online for us. I just blow Marcos a kiss. He catches it, puts it over his heart. Uh, Alex. You're able to find a, uh, they lead you to a very nice decadent, like stone, like those pebble, like the, you know, the pebble stone floors, uh, there it's got steam features. There's a mineral bath, but there's also just a uh, six head, uh, seven head shower, three on each side, one above. It's perfect. It's got everything you need to essentially wash everything. There's plant features inside, a moss uh, bath mat by the tub, and very expensive uh, shampoos, conditioners, body washes for you to be able to clean up nicely. This is uh, better than passable. It's expensive, that's what it is. <laughs> I, my mom used to work at a very sh a fancy hotel, so I used to... I, I know how fancy these places can get. Um, but you're able to clean up. Um, while Alex is getting cleaned up, um, Marcos is going to leave you guys alone in the room while he goes to Retrieve River. Uh, do you guys have any conversation while that's happening? Yeah. 
you and uh, Marcos seem a little close. Marcos is a peacock, like all Toreador turns and ghouls and everything else. If you keep him happy and you praise his ego and you praise his appearance, it's all good. That's fair. Besides, he can be charming if you don't get on his bad side. And didn't you mention earlier about not stereotyping those based on who they are? That's a little odd. Oh, I never you. said I was a good person. <laughs> Just noting something. Listen, I I like to be sassy. I like to be quick, but that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily going to hold you to something I say unless it's a fucking bond or a promise or a boon. No, I'm just, like I said, just merely pointing out something I observed. Well, Valerie is exactly is <laughs> kind of a stereotype screeching at herself anyway. Fair enough. <laughs> Transitioning back to Alex. Alex, about how long do you take to ensure that you are fully clean? Mm, at least half an hour. At least half an hour. All right. Enjoy the decadence, but I know I have a job to do and get it done. All right. Um. So <laughs> try uh, to make in time to attend the meeting. What's uh What's going through your mind as you're showering and cleaning off <laughs> about the situation and just so far? Try and mentally detox from the filth. Curious about these uh, two new kindred okay. that I've never met before. <laughs> and. And feeling like I was a bit of a petty asshole to everyone. Well, defense mechanisms and strangers. You never, you gotta, can't sh can't play your hand too quickly. More projecting the disgust from the sewer onto everyone else. That's fair. You uh, get cleaned up, uh, brush out your, uh, uh, dry off your hair, run your fingers through it. Uh, when you exit the private spa room, uh, there is, uh, the receptionist has been waiting there for you to finish. Just like, uh, Chef Baker, if you follow me, I can lead you to the room that, uh, your, your compatriots are at. Thank you so much, my good sir. Oh, it's a woman. Ah, uh, ma'am. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All good. Yeah. She, uh, leads you, uh, over to a room. It is a nice, like, nicely, lavishly furnished room. There is some very, like, this whole place just screams hedonistic decadence. The furniture is plush and 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 like deep rich colors. The drapery, there is a very expensive rug on the floor, the LED fireplace. There is a tall backed chair near the LED fireplace with a table next to it and a cigar box that you can tell with your exquisite taste contains very expensive Cuban cigars. Uh, but you're, the the rest of the kindred you have met tonight uh, are in there as well uh, as Annalise, and they have been waiting for a long time. Marco seems to be taking his sweet time getting River. Who's River? Well, yeah, uh, River uh, has River been. Oh wait, uh, River was mentioned by Valerie on the phone earlier, so you would. That is a question you could ask. Yes, so. Mm -hmm. Just walk through the river. Just you are a you're a rather nosy one, aren't you? I mean, it never hurts to ask. About to show up, so yes, he it is my ghoul, at least the one that I mostly use. However, due to my circumstances, when I was forced to leave town. They held on to him. You got a lot of house pets. Good to have reliable people. Well, yeah, I won't say it. That's your that's your thing to say, Valerie. Man, it's been like fucking 
35 minutes or some shit. What the fuck? It, as you say that, uh, the door opens and uh, Marco steps in and he's got, uh, he's actually helping support a young man with like chin length, wavy, curly, like messy, very bedraggled, uh, dark blonde hair. He's got blue eyes and a shadowy beard. This is a very handsome individual. Uh, very, uh, how old is River again, Valerie? About like, uh, about like mid twenties. Let me check on my my little sheet here. Do do. Uh, yeah. Uh, he appears to be like actually more like late 20s, like 28. All right. 28 year old uh, individual. Um, the thing that you will all notice, I won't even need even have you roll insight or awareness checks. He looks absolutely wrecked. While he is handsome, this his good looks are kind of what takes away from them is how gaunt he looks. He's pale, he's sweaty. He's got dark circles under his eyes, like he hasn't slept in weeks and like, or in days rather. And his eyes are bloodshot, which makes the blue, his, the blue irises even more up, like pronounced. Um, he's wearing just regular, t uh, just a, a regular t-shirt and um, some, some sweatpants that look to have the spa logos on them. And uh, Marcos is actually Marcos is actually like kind of like holding him up. He's got his arm around him, just kind of like like doing that like uh, that like hoist by the back of the pants sort of deal to keep someone standing. And uh, is kind it leads him over to a chair, just being like, "All right, kid, there you go," and settles him in one of the chairs. And As, Marco's uh, river kind of just like is looking dazed and delirious. Stand up and and walk on over. Does uh river still has his like usual knife? Or are they taking it from him? He doesn't have anything on him. I'll I'll look to Marcos. I say, do you have a knife I could borrow? Makes it a lot easier. Can't you just bite your own wrist? That way you can uh, lick it closed. As I'll go and do the barbaric means. No. Uh, I have a knife. My own wrist. Uh, do, you wish to borrow, do you wish to no. borrow a knife? I have one. Your knife has dead people on it. Shush. Oh, that's true. Your, your knife do have dead people on it. No, uh, I have spares. I always keep spare knives. Alex, <laughs> shut the fuck up. They're having a moment. Well, at this point, I'll just, I'll just buy my age of my wrist at this point, just as I'll feed uh, River some blood. Go ahead and give me a rouse check. And uh, River, upon uh, seeing the blood uh, presented to him, uh, he is literally going to grab your wrist desperately and just put his mouth on it and just start drinking. Like, like literally like a man, a, like a, a man who has not had a drink of water in days and has been walking through the desert the entire time. Such a messy eater. Leave, leave the little crackhead alone. I'm That's gonna just act. elbow Alex in the ribs really fucking hard. Annalise, what? What? He asked Shut for. She the asked fuck for. Up. She asked for a knife, and I want Shush. to be generous. What's wrong with that? Shush. I'm just ignoring them. I'm just focusing on Ruby right now. Just. Make sure, you know, it doesn't take too much. Yeah, no, after, you're uh, actually go ahead and uh, give me a strength and athletics to kind of pull away. Oh, boy, that's my favorite dice pool. Uh, I will say you can will... take an additional dice because Marcos does still have his hands on uh, River's shoulders. I'll, I'll help. Good. Oh wow! This is a That's very hungry ghoul. <laughs> One six. Seven. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> All right. So River doesn't initially want to let go; wants to keep drinking. But um, between Rex and uh, and Marcos, Marcos being a lot stronger than River. Uh, 
manages to like grab him by the back of his hair and just like yank him back, like being like, all right, kid, no, you can't do that. We can't do that. <laughs> that ain't, that's, that's not kosher. I pull out a napkin from my pocket and offer it to him. River reaches out with a shaken hand and starts to uh, wipe the blood off of his face. Thank you. And he, and he looks at Annalise and Alex in confusion at first, but then looks to Valerie and Rex and looks surprised to see Valerie. How, how did you get out? I have to explain that once we're the more private of an area. But to at least give a shortened version of it. You know, I imagine, I mean, my father probably still, Mark, Mark, he's still probably in the room right now, so. Yeah, Mark is still. My head over to, I'll point my head over to him, just. You decide to have a change of heart, finally. After, you know, however many years and weeks of torture. But I suppose late is better than never. And he looks at Mark suspiciously, but then like realizes that Mark uh, Marcos is still behind him and uh, takes on uh, his professional stance again. Like raises himself up a little bit, shoulders back, head head for, uh, chin up. Uh, thank you for coming back to retrieve me, Miss Monet. Hmm, <sighs> Monet. Lovely name. Lovely. Thank you. I thought I'll give a little, I'll give a nod to, to River as I go and just sit back down. And River just sits quietly as Marcos uh, s remains behind River, uh, but now has his, like, is kind of just like crosses his arms over the back of the chair and is leaning against it a little bit. Annalise, Alex, fantastic job cleaning up the mess. I sent some guys in to double check your work. Uh, they said it was just all sludge, so they brought the power washer down, washed it all away. Glad to see the job is done. Yeah. You know me, no loose ends. Rex. I'd like you to meet Annalise and Alex. They are going to be joining you guys in taking care of the little problem in the sewers. I suspected as much. All right. So there is more in the sewer. Well, uh, I have to get that looked at then. That's for you to find out. You guys were the ones that told us that there might be more of them. True. True. So figure it out. If we there's more gonna handle them you got it or what oh that's right so Annalise Alex the reason we're bringing you into this we got whites maybe you had at least one there might be what's more a, what's a white oh okay you want um, me here you got it fucking whites so why we can't have nice things uh I mean street that's all not not wrong, but uh but a white is a kindred that's gone too far off the deep end and is just basically a ravenous monster. To be clear, our situation is a little worse than just somebody who's gone off the deep end. From our research, we found that the one that we tracked down was not only uh made into a kindred very quickly but made into a white very quickly like within a month or two at most as far as i know that's not a thing that happens like ever so if there is more of these things and there's some kind of method to this madness we got to figure out what the fuck is going on not just with the one white but if there's more there's a problem and that means that there could be another one coming we don't want the cam we don't want the camis finding out about the whites so we need to take care of them quietly and effectively do you think there's a higher power creating or controlling them if there is we don't know. you gotta find out yeah understood originally, 
originally we were going to try and capture the one that we found, but someone got a little too uh, fiery and decided to execute the one that we had put down. Oh, let's so brew half for you. Did De Leon talk about the bring up anything more about the Tremere that he mentioned before? Funny you should ask. And he looks to Annalise. See? See? You ask, you and he delivers. I figured you were going to find out eventually why I spoiled the surprise in the car. sense you were saying something earlier about stereotypes valerie i hold i hope you can get over your own uh predispositions to our new coterie member if i'm understanding correctly hello got two Listen. quick questions for you marco yes chef baker First of all, what resources are we getting to deal with this little incident with the Whites? Well, currently, you got an info packet on the kit on the original White girl, that little college student that went missing. You guys can follow up on that. She was a person. Maybe you find out who she was hanging out with before she got turned. As for the resources, you've got the domain that De Leon was so generous enough to give the Coterie as a whole. Rex is in charge, by order of Sebastian. And you've got whatever, res uh, whatever resources they've put into it, I believe. And he looks to Rex. You got that DEA agent, right? Yes, we have a DEA agent under our surveillance uh he should be able to be a good asset if we need any other distractions or otherwise uh drug related incidents that require attention and then there's the uh additional new job that the boss has got in mind for you guys courtesy of mr rex here there's a power plant in holiday De Leon wants it. Made a yes. Rex here made a very compelling case for it to be added to our territory. So we're expanding, guys. Hey, we love to see business growth. Yeah, I'm looking to see about getting about an equal scale to our uh, Saint Petersburg neighbors. Main problem is that that whole little area is currently under the control of the T Tampa Bay Camarilla. So thankfully, there's a lot of distractions happening in Tampa Bay. Not sure what exactly that is. I heard about some explosions, some riots. Might have something to do with this malicious jester lady. I don't know. I don't follow her. There was a but, prison break too. Lady. Yeah, I have prison. Um, but yeah, th th there's a uh, all kinds of stuff happening over there and. If we, I figure, if we take our, we we take our uh, position carefully and go at the right time, we can snatch it from under their noses. Prison break where, Marcos? Oh, uh, there was a prison break over in Tampa. It's apparently, some prisoners died. I don't know. They've got their hands full over there. <laughs> oh, okay, not my problem. Is it's on it's in the news. You can see it. Some some chick, some e some like, uh, uh, some like tree hugger chick just went ape shit, blew up a power plant. Ballard Bateman, Anderson and Bateman law firm kind of button heads with them and shit. Yeah. So that's our two <laughs> missions right now: investigate the white. Can capture the power plant. Well, when you say capture, what do you mean? Literally take it over and ex and establish the area as our own. Kick out the Camarilla from the area. For just a power plant, that sounds pretty easy. We just go in there and say it's ours. Problem is, Alex it's several miles in uh, to that territory. Ah. So it's not just something we can walk up to. 
That makes more yeah. sense. Thanks for the, the explanation. Tampa Bay Camarilla, too, who are not known for being uh, particularly kind to those who mess with their assets, their territories. Cam is a fucking stooges anyway. You see, uh, Valerie, you see uh, your father about uh, open his mouth to say something, but then quickly remembers his place and shuts it. Mm-hmm. Alright, that's good that he did that. <laughs> anyway. Any other news, Marcos? Uh, not much. Uh, things have been quiet in the neutral zone. Uh, ow, I've got a cat on my lap that's biting me, sorry. Um, things been quiet in the neutral zone. Haven't heard much from the cam lately. News seems to be pretty quiet. They found a body in a lake, I think. Not our problem. Not at all. But south of the border, it ain't our problem. Uh, the boss got a bad review, uh, seemingly bad review online. That's so he's a little dealing with. You want me to find out who posted it? Oh, we know who posted it. Forget it, offer. And I love that you offered, Anna. It's very much appreciated, but uh, it's being handled. We just gotta. Do some sweet talking. All right. Well, now that's that's settled. Um, so yes, our little haven. We have a little coterie haven. You may sleep there if you like. Uh, it's relatively nearby to where the sewers were uh, that we had left. Um, feel free to take rooms as you please, or you can stay at your own domiciles. I have my own, for instance. Um, ooh, let's see. Um, Annalise, you said you're good with technology, right? Something like that. I'm the best. I have some very rudimentary setup cameras that I've, that is the reason that I saw you guys down there in the first place. Uh, if you wish to take that over, upgrade it to your pleasure, it's, I literally just set it up to ping my little laptop in there. It's it, I, I don't know how to do much else with them. I'm sure you did your best. We'll get it fixed. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I've got for you there. Uh, we will break up and figure out what we're going to do next. Probably going to go look into that girl first. I think that's probably the easiest thing to do. That would probably be the best route for us considering that you know, when it comes to Verney down south the sewers seem to be fine especially with Nick's patrolling it so if there is anything down there it's probably more hidden than the one we found right uh, that reminds me at some point we do have a meeting set up with the southernmost barony uh, co-barons uh, Zeke and I forget her name I've never Miss Bent, but, uh, Baron Bennett, we're we're working on it, but Dorothy is fussy. Who's Dorothy? Yes. She's the she's the one of the co barons of the Southern Barony. Um, uh, the one you couldn't remember. Yes. So, two barons, one location. We have a I have a meeting set up with them. Uh, we will use it to. Uh, find out business if they are also dealing with any recent ex- uh, missing people. They'll see if there's a white down there too. I have warned some people before that there are that are in their territory that there is something in the sewers. Let's to be clear. Let's let's make sure we do not mention the fact that there is a white in the sewers. If anybody asks or if you're concerned about somebody a kindred specifically and not a cam, say that there is, in fact, something in the sewers if you want to warn them about something. But do not say what it is. Do not clarify that it is a white. Do not mention whites. We had this as a problem last time. 
Uh, I'm from New York. It's always alligators in the sewer. Understood. Snitches get stitches, guys. To uh, elaborate on that, by the way, the re meetings are happening also due to the fact that we cannot enter their territories without a meeting first, as we have found out in the past that intruding on another bearing territory without a meeting is a relatively bad idea. Yeah. I had I had uh, made my way in the sewers when we first got here. Didn't realize the municipals connected all the way through th to St. Pete. I meant I made my way down to the Southern Barony without realizing it. It was basically a small exchange. Not a big deal. Just a warning more than anything. But yes, we have to greet the barons there, not only as a investigative thing, but also as a political gesture. I assume we'll have to talk with Pharaoh again at some point to get him acquainted with you two as well. Pharaoh's got his own issues he's been dealing with right now, so if you gotta meet with him, we've been told to direct you to Nyx. Understood. Lovely. Did you two any have any questions? Probably not, but not necessarily right this second for myself. Not the moment. Excellent. Well, feel free to ask. Um, I'll go ahead and provide you to my number. Thank you. I will put it in both of my phones. Can we get the Haven address as well? Yeah, 609 Hope Street. They rode here with me, Alex. We gotta take up to the... Y'all love it. It's nice and annoying. Annoying? You'll see what I mean. Hmm. Interesting design. But... Avant-garde oh. art. Oh, speaking of which, there's like a ghost or some shit. The uh, music box. Don't worry about it. I won't worry about it. Okay. As long as it doesn't fuck with me, I won't fuck with it. Uh, open the box. It'll it'll play a song that's relevant to you or some shit. I don't know. Uh, hmm. it just all it told me was to run, and I ran, and I, you know, I'm I'm not about to say no to a fucking ghost. I will it didn't have play to... a song okay. for you. Oh no, it played a song. It just said fucking run uh <laughs> the song was titled run boy run <laughs> oh got it i am familiar with that song it's a good song it's a good song <laughs> all right if uh, i uh may have a moment here rex I actually had something i wanted to talk to marcos about i brought up with you a little bit earlier uh sure yeah Marco, so I had a lot of time to think, especially over these last few weeks. I bet you did. And I would like to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'd like you to, if you could, please bring something up to Baron de Leon. Is that I would like a cut of the job that we, we did for you, especially considering how we went above and beyond. We got you that agent. We made sure it couldn't be traced back to you. It was all done quietly. I think it's fair to say that a cut could be. I just think I deserve a cut, especially considering a lot of the things that happened were because of my doing. The agent wouldn't have been put in our pockets if it wasn't for basically my efforts in the interrogation, or interrogate the uh, meeting. And when it came to clearing up, make sure no one knew what happened, I was the one to erase their minds and give them fake memories. I think it's more than fair. Go ahead and give me a manipulation and persuasion roll. Oh boy, I'm aroused because this is important to me. Give me money. Oh, my rouse. Oh, we got more hunger. Okay, it's fine. Why are you, you rousing? Oh, no, I'm uh, rousing the blood just to blood surge called. Sorry, I always call it rouse the blood, but blood surge so I can get two extra dice here. Ah. Let's see. So that is a. Damn, I'm storytelling. Can you not? Uh, 
Okay, you know what? We're gonna <laughs> use willpower there for one of those. Because I'm like that. Uh, six successes. Six successes. Marcos looks at you for a little bit. All right, Miss Monet, I'll bring it up to him. It's impressive that you even got back here, honestly. We were half expecting River here, and he's like taps River's shoulder a little bit to just die in bed. But and he ruffles uh, Marcos uh, River's hair a little bit. Nice to see that the owner cares for the pet. All right, I'll talk to him about it. Good, I appreciate it. But for now, you guys got work to do. Understood. You guys pick up and start heading out to the uh, to the uh, the the SU the hybrid the hybrid right. It is a hybrid, but it is a station wagon hybrid. That's why it can seat seven. Yeah. You guys uh, head on uh, head on over to the station wagon hybrid, easily able to fit everyone needed into the car, uh, helping uh, Mark Marky help in River along the way. Yes, Rex. Um, I get a weird craving. Um, is there any trees nearby? Yeah, there's plenty of trees. I'm going to go um, inspect a tree. Okay. What are you looking for? Looking for some insects. Okay. Go ahead and give me a wits and awareness. Uh, four successes. Four successes. All right. Uh, with four successes, uh, what insect are you looking for? I was trying to Google here, but um, are there any cicadas on this tree? After cicada get in recently, more than likely, yes. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm just doing it. I'm going to just uh, grab the one and just crunch right into that motherfucker. All right, yeah, easy enough. You are able to uh, bite into this uh, cicada. It is an interesting okay. texture, but like, are uh, you actually okay? Uh, did, did, <laughs> okay, just making sure. Is that that was not... yeah? It's Thank an, you. It's an interesting texture. It's very crunchy. Nothing you've ever had before, but you uh, consume it, swallow it, manage to keep it down, and then head back to the vehicle. Rex, I don't know what that was. That was weird. That was weird indeed, and a little disgusting. Let's, let's let's not talk about it. I, I don't know what that was. Agreed. Alex, I thought you were a chef. Aren't there like fancy high-end places that serve like crickets and chocolate and mealworms and coconut powder and shit? Potentially, but there's artistry involved there. It's not just going up to a tree and grabbing something off of it. Mm -hmm. We'll agree to disagree. Understood. And I'd like to make a formal apology about earlier. I wasn't feeling myself. Considering you are covered in three inches of grime, that makes sense. <laughs> also all... cutting up bodies. <laughs> you all clamber into the car. Annalise uh, punching the, uh, cor the the address into uh, the, the, the car's GPS. 
and you start heading over to the Coterie Haven. We're gonna pan now to a different part of St. Petersburg, of the Tampa Bay area. You see, we, we, fall, the, we fall in on an alley where a hooded individual is currently drinking from some poor kind. Looks to be male, young man, dressed up like he was just at a bar. He is weakly. Li- uh, he is hanging weakly in her in this uh, individual's grasp, and before long, his arm falls limp, and his body drops to the ground. The individual in the hoodie they look down on this person, check the pulse, and quickly get up and start running away. From the now dead individual. As this kindred walks away, leaves the body behind, we pan on the leg and on uh, up the leg to the hand. And the hand jerks and twitches. You go up the arm to the face, and this Kind's eyes open, pupils fully dilated black. His mouth opens, and fangs have replaced his canines. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Thank you so much for joining us for an episode of Don't Get Caught. Uh, th- well, we're gonna well, thank you to our new players for joining our table and rounding out our ranks a little bit more here on St. Pete by Night. Thank you to my returning players, Jay and Kraz. This has been a delightful uh, session. Uh, I appreciate all of them. Uh, make sure to tune in uh, this Friday, tomorrow, for an episode of our Hunter stream, What the Hell Was That? This Saturday, we we have an episode of After Dark, maybe. If we're fil- if this is premiering while Kent's on vacation, then no, we don't have an episode of After Dark. Uh, Sunday, we have an episode of Bloody Strings, our Camarilla VTM game. And Tuesday, if once again, if Kent is not on vacation, we will have an episode of Rage Across Tampa. But if he's on vacation, no, we won't. Uh, but for sure, next Thursday, we will have another episode of Don't Get Caught, where you'll see our coterie and dealing with the problems ahead. So hopefully we catch you come back, coming back for that. And we will see you all next week. Bye. This has been a St. Petersburg by Night production. Don't Get Caught is produced in agreement with the World of Darkness and Dark Pack. The storyteller for Don't Get Caught is Nikki. Tonight's characters were voiced by Krizaz, Jay, Mango, and Jade. Visit our website at stpetebynight.com for more information about all of our productions and how you can become a part of our community. Thank you for listening. Until next time, fangs, stakes, and claws out.